आज के दिन पंद्रह नवंबर को झारखंड का जन्म हुआ था मैं दोनों को और इससे भी बड़ा रीजन है जिसको हम किसी वजह से सेलिब्रेट भी कर सकते हैं हालांकि वो हमारा लॉस है आज विनोबा भावे जी की पुण्यतिथि है जो कि महात्मा गांधी के विचारों को आगे बढ़ाते रहे और संभवतः वो लास्ट माइलस्टोन थे जो कि गांधी जी को इस करीबी से जानते थे इस तरह ये दिन हमारे लिए बहुत शुभ है और आज इस गोष्ठी में जो लोग यहाँ उपस्थित हैं उनमें बहुत सारी ऐसी डिग्नेटरीज हैं जो कि स्कॉलर्स इंटेलेक्चुअली हाई कैलिबर पीपल मीडिया ब्यूरोक्रैट्स स्टूडेंट्स डिफरेंट सोसाइटी के डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डिंग स्टेक होल्डर्स इंडस्ट्री थिंक टैंक्स सभी लोग उपस्थित हैं ये विषय एक ऐसा विषय है जिस पर इससे पहले शायद बहुत कम चर्चा हुई है या चर्चा नहीं हुई है मुझे याद आता है आज एक स्पीकर है उनकी संस्था ने एक पैनल डिस्कशन किया था उसके बाद संभवतः ये अकेली ऐसी चर्चा है जो दिल्ली में हो रही है प्लानिंग कमीशन के ऊपर प्रधानमंत्री का वक्तव्य उसके पहले लोगों की एनालिसिस इस परिप्रेक्ष्य में प्लानिंग कमीशन का क्या शेप होना चाहिए नई एंटिटी कैसी होनी चाहिए इसका कोई We are starting the day on a good note. Any intellectual exercise should invoke the God before. We cannot appreciate Prathna, but can I invite you to appreciate the efforts of all these young students? Thank you very much. Please have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. May I go ahead? May I have your permission to go ahead with this session now? Uh, I would like to invite the Chief Guest, Sri A. R. Kohli Ji. And Sri T S R Subramaniam Ji, Dr. Rupak Chattopadhyay, Professor Akhil Sinha, please come and join on the stage.
dignitaries on the dais, everyone present here, good morning again. Dignitaries on the dais need no introduction, but uh, I'm going to be very brief in my welcome and introduction. Shri Kier, A.R. Kohliji has been governor of Mizoram from 2001 to 2006. He has been advisor to chief minister. He is one of those few persons in India who understands the issues of rural development, tribal development. And that's what he had been suggesting to Minister of Mizoram. Academically, an excellent student. He was the first batch of IIM Calcutta. He topped the entrance examination of IIMs that we have, which is supposedly, the economy says it is the toughest examination in the world in management education. There are few other credentials, a professor in past, and so on. There's something that a seek. There is a secret which I got to know yesterday. I have not taken permission, but I'm taking the liberty. When he was eight, in certain situation, he said to his grandfather, his father, uh, his grandfather said to him, "Are you Lord Sahab? That you are demanding this?" He said, "Yeah, I'm going to become the Lord Sahab one day. Please do what I'm trying to do." <laughs> That means he has a vision and he has a plan. We could not consider, we could not think of anyone else who could have a vision and plan to talk about plan and condition. May I request Dr. Rupak Chattopadhyay to present memento and welcome Sri Air Kohli. Mm -hmm. Sri Pal and Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Sri TSR Subramaniam has been the Cabinet Secretary of Government of India. He is Chairman of a High Power Committee on Environment today with this uh, government as well. He is known for his love for India. He has done a lot of work on cultural issues. To protect cultural heritage of India, he has invited many international institutions. These are some of the facts which are known and unknown. Of course, he has been one of the change agent who has been motivating corporate India to do more and better for the society. So we, we wanted to invite uh, Sri TSR Subramaniam to bring the perspective from how other stakeholders who are not the actors of planning commission look at planning commission, look towards planning commission. May I request Professor Rakesh Sinha to please welcome TSR Subramanian Ji. been asked not to go ahead with welcome of Professor Rakeshana and Dr. Rupak Chattopadhyay because they are the host. But I would like to give a brief introduction of Dr. Rupak Chattopadhyay. He is presently the President and CEO of Forum of Federations. The, uh, the, the, panel is, uh, the seminar that we are doing is joint seminar of Forum of Federations and India Policy Foundation. He was pre previously the Director of Asia Pacific Programs and Senior Director of Global Programs. Uh, with the organization. He was also a member of consultative, consultative group on the study of intergovernmental relations and dispute resolution mechanisms, interstate council, government of India. And there are other associations I'm trying to be very brief so that we have more time for discussion. And I have special instructions from both the guests today that we should have some time for question and answer so that there is a better interaction possible today. Thank you so much. 
Uh, I will request Professor Rakesh Sina is honorary director of India Policy Foundation. And of course, as you know, is one of the national thinkers on several issues which are concerning India, contemporary India. Uh, with this uh, quick background, uh, I will proceed with the uh, main discussion now. I will request Professor Rakesh Sinha to give, uh, to welcome everyone and offer the theme of the program today. Thank you. आज के सेमिनार के मुख्य अतिथि श्री कोहली जी और मुख्य वक्ता श्री सी एस आर सुब्रमण्यम जी श्री रूपक जी राहुल जी और सेमिनार में उपस्थित मेहमान जब आज हम प्लानिंग कमीशन पर एक सेमिनार ऑर्गेनाइज कर रहे हैं तो हमारे मन में एक प्रश्न उठता है कि आज इसकी आवश्यकता क्यों पड़ी मित्रों 15 अगस्त को प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने एक डिक्लेरेशन किया था यह योजना आयोग प्लानिंग कमीशन अपनी यूटिलिटी खो चुकी है और हम एक नया स्ट्रक्चर क्रिएट करेंगे मैं उम्मीद कर रहा था कि इस देश की इंटेलिजेंसिया इस देश के एनजीओ इस देश के थिंक टैंक राष्ट्रीय सरोकार के नेशनल कंसर्न के इस महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दे पर गंभीर चिंतन मनन करेंगे पोलिटिकल पार्टी बट बाई दी प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ दंट्री इससे हम इंटेलेक्चुअल लिथार्जी कहें और डिविजन एमंग द इंटेलेक्चुअल्स कहें नॉट ए सिंगल ब्रेन स्टॉर्मिंग स्टेटमेंट There may be exception has taken place. This is the most unfortunate part of the country. हमने जब इस सेमिनार को ऑर्गेनाइज करने की बात सोची तो हमारे ब्रेन में तीन ही बातें थी कि आखिर प्लानिंग कमीशन को प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने समाप्त करने की बात क्यों कही इसका हमें उत्तर चाहिए वी नीड आंसर फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट एंड द इंटेलिजेंसिया एंड इन आवर डिस्कोर्स दिज ए क्वेस्ट Why, after our prime minister declared to end an institution which has become the part and parcel of development discourse of the country? So, I, where I believe that the Bharat Yojana Aayog planning process is the victim of infantile disorder. This was such a disorder that it correct, 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 planning commission a white elephant. वो डिसऑर्डर क्या था मैं एक एग्जांपल देता हूं 1930 से इंडिया में डिस्कोर्स शुरू हुआ प्लानिंग का और 1940s में आकर दैट डिस्कोर्स गॉट ए कंक्रीट सेल उसमें दो प्रपोजल थे प्लानिंग के बारे में अनेक प्रस्ताव आए अनेक प्रपोजल्स आए लेकिन दो इंपॉर्टेंट प्रपोजल था वन वॉज प्रेजेंटेड बाय द सोशलिस्ट माइंडेड कांग्रेस पीपल जो कि एक तरह से गवर्नमेंटल प्रपोजल था सेकेंड वॉज प्रपोज बाय द एट इंडस्ट्रियस्ट सेवन प्लस वन जॉन मथाई के अलावा जितने साथ थे वो इंडस्ट्रियस थे या बिग बिजनेस को रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे थे देर वॉज ए फंडामेंटल डिफरेंस बिटवीन द कैरेक्टर ऑफ दैट बिजनेस एंड इंडस्ट्रियल ग्रुप एंड द प्रेजेंटली वी है नेशनल मूवमेंट के दे वे पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ द नेशनल मूवमेंट सो देर कंसर्न वॉज society not only merely profit was the bombay plan ke naam par aaya us pure plan ke discourse se bombay plan ko reject kar diya gaya their first attempt to delegitimize the efforts of the private capital and private initiatives private entrepreneurs by the process of the from the process of the plan so the process of planning begins with the exclusion of a important segment of the society मैं उसका एक एग्जाम्पल देता हूं दैट वॉज हाउ मच कंसर्न दे है उन्होंने जो प्रस्ताव दिया था उसने कहा था कि एग्रीकल्चर का ग्रोथ इन 15 इयर्स दिस विल हंड्रेड थर्टी परसेंट 
Industrial growth 5.0% and service sectors growth 2.0%. Per capita income would be doubled in 15 years. This was an ambitious proposal with the concrete groundwork. There was a clash between the private initiative and the Congress backed initiative. Usma ek chota udaran deta hu ki Eastern economic economist jisko Billa on karte the usne ek comment diya tha ek remark diya tha Mahalanovich ko Jawaharlal Nehru ne jab involve kiya planning ke process pe usne kaha yadi inka involvement hua he is a statistician he is not an economist so it would be disaster for the country wo kitna theek tha kitna galat tha yah ek important nahi hai डिस्कोर्स के प्रोसेस से जब आप इंपॉर्टेंट सेगमेंट को एक्सप्लोर करते हैं तो फिर प्लानिंग इनबैलेंस हो जाता है उस प्लानिंग प्रोसेस में स्टेट पर प्लानिंग एक प्रिविलेज होने की जगह एक बर्डन हो गया प्लानिंग इज प्रिवलेज ऑफ द स्टेट बट इट हैज बिकम ए बैगेज इन द बर्डन फिर उस बैगेज इन बर्डन को करेक्ट करने के लिए स्टेट ने टाइम लेने की कोशिश की सेकंड जो प्लानिंग के प्रोसेस में जो हमारी गलतियां होती रही पूरे डिस्कोर्स से वर्नाकुलर इंटेलेक्चुअल्स एंड सोशल वर्कर्स रिमेन एक्सक्लूडेड जैसे भी राहुल जी ने विनोबा भावे का नाम लिया फिफ्टीन अगस्त को फिफ्टीन नवंबर के लिए बट वी फॉरगेट बिरसा मुंडा His contribution is no less than any freedom fighter of the country. He was born on 15th November. So, vernacular is that so a sociological study can be done. The planning process is first, second, third, five year plan. So, people are involved. The social science teacher tells us that they were great economists. They had great education. They could have spoken. Great English knowledge. They have great English knowledge of the English literature and language. But in Bharat, the half is too dark. Reality is too dark. Because of the planning process, the intention was good. It was not delivered. After the process, the process of Gandhian, Gandhian, the social activists and thinkers, they were just in the planning process. एज ए कोटा को ऑप्ट किया जाता था देर मस्ट बी टू थ्री गांधियंस दे रिमेन मार्जिनलाइज बाई देर नंबर एंड देर एफर्ट्स एंड देर एफर्ट्स यह एक्सक्लूजन जो था जो कि सोशल रियलिटी से जुड़े हुए थे जिनके कंधे पर झोला होता था जो गांव दलित और ट्राइबल के बीच जाते थे जिनके दिन प्रतिदिन के जीवन से विकास की प्रक्रिया से जुड़े हुए थे उनके डिजायर्स डिमांड से जुड़े हुए थे उनके पर्सपेक्टिव से जुड़े हुए थे दे रिमेन एक्सक्लूडेड बाद में जब ऐसे लोगों का एसेसन हुआ फॉर एग्जाम्पल बलवंत राय मेहता और अशोक मेहता इट इज टू गांधियंस हु लेट द प्रोसेस ऑफ डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन और तीसरी बात जिससे प्लानिंग कमीशन विरक्त रही जिससे एक्सक्लूजन रहा इंडिया इज ए कंट्री विच ए अनपैरल डेमोग्राफिक डाइवर्सिटीज जब हम डेमोग्राफिक डाइवर्सिटीज की बात करते हैं तो हमारे दिमाग में दो ही बातें आती हैं आइडेंटिटी कास्ट कम्युनिटी लैंग्वेज लेकिन यह था नहीं डेमोग्राफिक डेमोग्राफिक डाइवर्सिटीज इज ऑल्सो ओरिएंटेड टू वर्ड द स्किल्स ऑफ द पीपल आप छोटी जगहों पर जाए एक एक कास्ट है उसका एक अपना स्किल है वह अपने बच्चों को एजुकेशन देने के अच्छे फॉर्मल एजुकेशन की जगह इन फॉर्मल स्किल्स में डेवलप करना चाहता है क्या नहीं हमारा पूरा एंसेंट इंडिया का हिस्ट्री फॉर्मल एजुकेशन से अलग इन फॉर्मल एजुकेशन और स्किल डेवलपमेंट के आधार पर चलता था ये पूरा जो फेडरलाइज सिस्टम था इंडिया की इकोनॉमी का ये प्लानिंग की पूरे डिस्कोर्स से गायब है वह छोटी छोटी कॉम्युनिटी है जिनको बेस बनाकर हम इकोनॉमी को डेवलप कर सकते थे जिनके स्किल्स का जो आज प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने कहा स्किल डेवलपमेंट के लिए हम मिनिस्ट्री बना रहे हैं यह हमारे इकोनॉमी का सोसाइटी का एक इंटीग्रल पार्ट होता है आज भी जो लोग गांव जाते हैं जिनका गांवों से संबंध है वो देखते हैं कैसे गांव में 
स्किल्स डेवलपमेंट होता है और भारतीयों की ब्रेन हमारे हम अपनी आप प्रशंसा नहीं कर सकते हैं जो लोग हमारे इस ऑडियंस में सोशल कंपोजिशन जो मैं देख रहा हूँ बिलो फोर्टी दे आर डोमिनेटिंग आई एम हैप्पी दैट द सेमिनार इज डोमिनेटेड बाई द पीपल हु आर द फ्यूचर ऑफ इंडिया जो ये बच्चे अपना मोटरसाइकिल सर्विसिंग के लिए जाते हैं वहां पर एक छोटू होता है जिसकी आयु 10 से 12 साल की होती है वो इतनी अच्छी मोटरसाइकिल की सर्विसिंग करता है उसको लोग मास्टर कहते हैं इस पूरी प्रक्रिया से विरक्त रहने के कारण प्लानिंग कमीशन पहला उसने किया कि राइट पॉलिटिक्स को डिलेजिटिमाइज किया अब देखिए जिस जिसको लाइसेंस परमिट कोटा राज जो एक्सट्रीम था आई कंसीडर दैट वाज एक्सट्रीम उस लाइसेंस परमिट कोटा राज को हम खत्म कर रहे हैं तो बॉरोड विजन फ्रॉम द यूनाइटेड स्टेट ऑफ अमेरिका और द यूनाइटेड और सोवियत इन फॉर्मर सोवियत यूनियन यह जो उधार ली गई जो दृष्टि होती है और उधार ली गई जो विवेक होता है उसका क्षणिक प्रभाव होता है जब तक आप मौलिकता अपने नहीं होती है और मौलिकता तब होती है जब यथार्थ से आप जुड़ते हैं अपनी मौलिकता को आप पहचानते हैं और इन बातों के कारण आज प्लानिंग कमीशन यह समझ नहीं पा रहा है कि हम प्लानिंग के प्रोसेस को कैसे करें 45 लाख करोड़ का बार हमें योजना है लेकिन 100 जो इंडिया के रिचेस्ट बिलेनेर्स हैं उनके पास ऑलमोस्ट मोर देन 300 बिलियन डॉलर है 200 हंड्रेड रिचेस ऑफ द कंट्री कंट्रोल ऑलमोस्ट 60 परसेंट ऑफ द एसेस ऑफ द कंट्री तो प्लानिंग के प्रोसेस से क्या हम एक उस बड़े एसेट के होल्डर्स को बाहर रख सकते हैं जो दूसरा एक मन में सस्पेशन आता है क्या नई नई स्ट्रक्चर जो बनेगी उसमें क्या प्राइवेट कैपिटल डोमिनेट करेगा क्या अंबानी अडानी डोमिनेट करेंगे और द प्लानिंग विल ड्रिफ्ट फ्रॉम दी स्टेट प्रिवलेज टू दी प्राइवेट कैपिटल प्रिवलेज नो इट्स नॉट ट्रू आई एग्री वन थिंग फ्रॉम द नेहरूवियन एरा एंड द नेहरूवियन कॉन्सेंस दैट कॉन्सेंस इज इगेलिटेरियन सोसाइटी इंडिया कैन नॉट डेयर और नो पोलिटिकल पार्टी नो आइडियोलॉजी कैन डेयर To drift from that consensus, वो एक जो समानतावादी समाज का सपना है वो भारत का यथार्थ सपना है उस सपने में दो बातों को एड कर दिया एफ डी आई एंड प्राइवेट कैपिटल आर रियलिटी इज नाउ राज्य के बाहर अब ये प्राइवेट कैपिटल क्या करते हैं इनको झारखंड के मिनरल्स और छत्तीसगढ़ के मिनरल्स वो ग्रीन उनको लाता है वो गवर्नमेंट से परमिशन लेते हैं न्यू लिबरलिज्म के तहत वहां जाते हैं वहां अपना डेवलपमेंट करते हैं वहां क्या डेवलपमेंट होता है नहीं मालूम लेकिन उनके एसेट का डेवलपमेंट होता है तो दे आर आउटसाइड दी ऑर्गेनाइज प्लान एफर्ट्स ऑफ द स्टेट प्लानिंग कमीशन के बदमान स्ट्रक्चर से बाहर होने के कारण दे आर नॉट अकाउंटेबल टू दी प्लानिंग कमीशन और दे आर इनडायरेक्टली अकाउंटेबल टू देम सो दे गेट दी मोर प्रिवलेजेस आज बाहर रहने के कारण जो प्लानिंग है वो प्राइवेट और पब्लिक कैपिटल दोनों की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है इसके कारण प्राइवेट कैपिटल की भागीदारी हो बट द मार्केट एंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ डेवलपमेंट मस्ट बी स्लेव ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी so indian state must play the dominant role rather democracy should not become the slave of the market isliye mujhe laga ki fdi ki bhagidari kaisi ho ek holistic plan bharat ke liye ho jisme varnakur intellectuals jinhone bahut kaam kiya hai state ke bahar rehkar ngo jinhone bahut kaam kiya hai to british ne jo india ki mapping demographic mapping mapping resource mapping डेवलपमेंटल मैपिंग 19वीं शताब्दी में किया था 19 सेंचुरी में किया था आज उस मैपिंग को करने की फिर से जरूरत है इसलिए प्लानिंग कमीशन शुड नॉट ओनली बी द रिसोर्स एलोकेटेड बॉडी जो रिसोर्स एलोकेशन कर रहा है और कन्वेंशनल विजडम से चलने वाली बॉडी हो इट शुड बी रियली थिंक टैंक इट शुड जेनरेट द आइडिया 
which should involve the vernacular intellectuals, vernacular activists. This elite ka privilege ho jaye. Aap sociological study jo hum kara le, ki kin kin logon ko humne involve kiya, isko ek achhi study honi chahiye ki planning se ek jure hue log, bureaucrats, thinkers, academics ka samaj shastriya prishth bhumi kya hai. Yeh aapko unravel kar dega ki planning ki vishalta ke karan kya hai. इससे मुझे लगा कि दिस इज ए पैराडाइम शिफ्ट उस पैराडाइम शिफ्ट में अगर हम कुछ कंट्रीब्यूट कर सकते हैं दैट वी ग्रेट आई एम थैंकफुल टू गवर्नमेंट आल्सो दे हैव पोस्टपोन द डिक्लेरेशन ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर व्हेन वी इंफॉर्म दैट वी आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग द सेमिनार दे वर गोइंग टू प्राइम मिनिस्टर वर गोइंग टू डिक्लेअर इट बिफोर हिज ऑस्ट्रेलिया जर्नी लेकिन जब मैं उनके टूर से पहले हमने इंफॉर्म किया उनको कि वी आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग अ सेमिनार एंड वी आर होल्डिंग द सेमिनार द और बिग इंटरेस्टेड आर पार्टिसिपेटिंग तो इसको पोस्टपोन किया गया आई एम रियली थैंक यू टू दी गवर्नमेंट फॉर दैट और मैं राहुल जी को कहता हूँ कि आप काफी बार में हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू सर आफ्टर दिस थीम इंट्रोडक्शन इस परिचय के बाद हम अपने गेस्ट को सुनना चाहते हैं मैं निवेदन करूँगा श्री टी एस आर सुब्रमण्यम जी से कि वो आज के आज के सेमिनार एक्ट्रेस अपना थैंक यू डॉक्टर राहुल सिंह चेयरमैन कोहली साहब असीना साहब सुभाष भाई साहब Distinguished guests, I'm delighted to be with you today. I think after the very uh, pointed but uh, exciting introduction given by Dr. Sina, he has put the uh, issue in a very broad intellectual framework, <coughs> looking at the paradigm shift that we require now. In a sense, it has already taken place. The change of government in the last few months, new way of looking at governance, new way of looking at the relationship between people and the government. Already, it's taking place. And surely there is room for your new thinking body in the country to reflect the new realities of the country. And what we have not been able to achieve in 70 years to set us again on that path afresh. What we failed to do, I think Planning Commission has that task to do right now. Uh, in my hurry, and uh, you mentioned the Environment Committee, I forgot till I came in the car in all. I said, you out of our planning commission, I didn't read structure and process. So, uh, what I thought of yesterday and noted down in 10-15 minutes related to the new out of our planning commission. So, I will be forgiven if I don't talk about the structure at this stage. But I feel that once you define what the new planning commission ought to do, and I think it will be a failure if you define it to too closely. You must allow it to grow allow it new ideas to come. So if you, so shall we say if you define, define the new parameters, the initial parameters, and the whole object should be, it should innovate and build on itself. And that should be part of the structure of the planning commission. Before that, I think the easier task will be to say what it should not be. And let me start with that. In the last few years, the last 10, 15, 20 years, uh, when Mr. Montek Aluvalia became the uh, uh, Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission, I had predicted at that time, 10 years, 19, 2004, 2005, that, that time, that we give another year for the Planning Commission to be wound up. As a champion of the free market, as a person who wants uh, open market to decide papers coming out, without knowing some university in Wisconsin, some university in Berkeley, they will all produce suddenly papers, papers. Then the US will mention there, saying we need negotiations on services, international negotiations on services. By that time, they have produced 20 or 30 papers from different areas. India would have zero papers. You are negotiating with people backed by Documents, three years, four years, intensive research, and then opinions already formed on those particular regard. 
Now, if you want to aspire to be a power in the world, you need to have your ability to think yourself. You need to create your own. And therefore, I think this is another aspect you need. You need data analysis, conclusions. So Indian negotiators need to have that kind of a background and the basis. Uh, let me look at the next broad perspective. What is the linkage that uh, our universities have with our government? I have even seen, astonishingly, even our national laboratories, CSAR laboratories, which are government-funded laboratories, they have very little contact with our own industries. I have seen in America, every university has live, direct, applied sciences applied technology contact with industries, with economy, with service sector. This is a live one-to-one -one relationship. I have seen in Europe, it is half warehouse, it is half academic and half relationship. In India, it's nearly zero. We are all in absolute silos here. We, we, we believe in absolute silos. I found that I am, I am not talk to each other, not to speak of other agencies. Our IITs don't speak to each other, not to speak. Today is an area where every research, every major project is a huge collaborative project. New advances take place through working people, working together. Now, there's clearly a role for planning commission to come. Bring, yes, private sector into the thinking process. Bring university thinking process. Bring research robotism thinking process. I think we need a more thinking process here. We need to do that. Uh, I, this is not a political forum, no, but I've written about it, therefore I can speak about it. I've written about it a few years back. Uh, how do you, this is the point you made. Uh, please don't mistake me, I'm not being political here. <coughs> how do you expect people where half the problem is to lift up your rural areas with no knowledge of our rural areas to come? and know how to do it. I, I, I've got highest respect for say Rangarajan or for uh, even the ex prime minister or for uh, Monte. Highest regard for them, for their intellectual ability and for knowledge of uh, uh, macroeconomics. I would not go beyond that. But uh, how, do you, well, how do you balance it? Uh, the, the country's problems are not, of course they are in Delhi, Bombay and Calcutta, but a larger problems of connectivity, of thought, we are not breaking up because of differentiation. So I think, that secondly, is planning entirely an economic process? Is it just about money? Is it just about macroeconomics? Isn't it about psychology? Isn't it about physiology? Isn't it about getting what is being thought of in Delhi, getting transmitted to the village? And what is being thought of in the village being transmitted here? Isn't it about how to convince other people and get things going? Isn't it about implementation? And what use is planning if it is no implementation? What use is planning to say, I have planned well, but the states have failed. If the states are going to fail, it is the job of the planning commission to ensure that the plan is prepared in such a manner that it is capable of implementation by the state and will be implemented. It is absurd to think of a plan and implementation. A plan and implementation is one continuous whole. You cannot break it up. And I think these are fundamental problems. And if we analyze what has happened in the past, we are seeing that. Some of the new things, uh, grassroots ideas, new grassroots ideas, India is a hugely innovative place. There are innovations, as textile secretary I saw that kind of innovation in every village in India, not even block. Every village had its own unique identity. I have spoken to spoken to Raj people. They say every village, every block has its own unique identity. We don't see it here in Delhi. How is that? You see, go to America. They somehow distill it and bring it to a saleable form and bring it to Washington. And bring it to Berkeley and bring it to Harvard. They, they, what have we done here? To transform all that, this is the world. I've been talked about universities and institutes. Uh, we have the third or fourth best uh, uh, space program in the world, uh, thanks to 
one CSA laboratory. I'm not sure I can name many more than that. But thanks to one CSA laboratory, one department, we have this space program. How many people are using the output of that? I discovered last week, 15 days back, it is now possible to use 1 in 50,000 map for forest area to count the trees. You can use that map or you can use the satellite for seeing the air pollution. You can see for hydrological purposes. We have just not imagined how the assets that we have, the natural assets, and some of them have done very well, how to translate them no, and, no, 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 and apply it. Because we are silos. We just don't know. We just don't know what the, we are not. How to parlay our, we give information technology to Wisconsin. We can't do it to get our details of our land records in India. I mean, how absurd can we be? We are not using the thing that we have domestically here to convert India into a modern country. I am working now on a project which now is going to bring uh, information technology and core banking to 150,000 villages which can transform the country. Now, there are 25 other areas that commission possibly can help. Uh, one last thing they can possibly do is the time has come now when every ministry, every area of operation, once in 10 years, a group of two or three outsiders should come who have no stake there and look at it for a month or two or three and then say, Baba, I will suggest this is what you are doing. Each one is an empire, each one will not be touched. The minister holds it on personally as if it is as this is personal property, you don't understand that, the, that they are all doing public work. And last point, before we go to the final point. What about center state relationship? Isn't there a role for a neutral outsider to come and help build up silos, build up ways in which ideas can flow backward and forward, and this can be done? I think that is the wrong way they can. Skill development is where we have talked about, I will not prolong uh, it. It is probably the most important thing that is required today. Before I close, uh, I happen to read, I don't know how many have read lately, this book by Michikaku. Uh, mm, number of people have read now. Michikaku is a bestseller. If you don't, I, he talks about. Uh, the year 2100, uh, the wrong way off, 70, 80, 90 years off, how the world will be. Of course, it's science fiction, but it is beautiful science fiction. It talks of physics as it is today in the best, most advanced laboratories in the world. It talks of physics as of today. And then see what are the permutations, combinations, how will they interact, and how we will proceed for the next 70, 80 years. It talks of nanotechnology, it talks of future of internet, future of medicine, new energy possibilities. Incidentally, India has not started thinking of fourth, fourth dimension uh, nuclear technology. Suddenly, it's going to explode next year. Next year, you are going to see, take a word for it now. And that is a kind of a technology, nu nuclear technology, completely safe, completely non nuclear a brand new approach, 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 10 megawatts separately. At the present rate, the kind of new megawattage required in India, we will not be able to meet current and future needs for the next 30 years with the current funding here. It is possible now to decentralize this and see every village, every area, every factory. Suddenly, the funding can be found. In five years, we can be self dependent. Surprise, who is talking about? Who is talking about it? People don't know. Now, this, the kind of thing that Michi Kaku talks about, that is what our planning commission to talk about. Who will do all this? Surely it can't be a bureaucratic machine with assistance. It has to be a loose bunch of people, half mad people, but with some experience who know India and give them a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility, and give them 
young bright people are there, research people, universities elsewhere, give a choice to each of them to take two or three of them who are builders of the future. There are many possibilities the structure can be built in many ways, but I thought it's a brand new idea and hopefully some of these will get protected in the new time. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. You have provoked us to on some of the new issues to take it forward. We have a long day session. There are two panel discussions so that we can uh, they have they have planned to be panel discussions so that we can hear more uh, experts on the issues. Uh, the second session, uh, the first panel uh, will start at 12 o'clock, and the second panel will start at 2 30. Of course, the details are all given to you. Uh, with this background, there are two. Uh, there is one uh, submission and request. May I request you to please uh, switch off your mobile or put your mobile on vibration so that others don't get disturbed. This is your permission. With this, I will proceed. May Shri A R Kohli ji se nivedan karunga, jo ki aaj ke mukhya tithi hai. May I please nivedan karunga ki wo apna mukhya tithi. Thank you. पहले तो मैं बधाई देता हूँ एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण विषय पे हमने आज पोस्टिंग की है मुझे आशा है कि इसमें चर्चा हो आई हैव बीन ए स्टूडेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड मैनेजमेंट एंड आई लर्न ओनली वन थिंग इफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम गो बैक टू फंडामेंट because any solution based on fundamentals is a lasting solution and if you just make a solution based on the superstructure and fundamentals are weak somehow that superstructure will collapse over a period of time i'll go back to the history when this planning commission was created just for two minutes yes we need a plan Again, as a student of management, what is the plan? It is where we are today and where we want to be tomorrow. That tomorrow is the gap of time. Should I reach alone or should everybody come? In the context of the nation, everybody has to reach there. That's the first part. A plan is a must. Because in management, there are only four words, planning, organizing, implementation, and control. First you plan, then you organize the resources, then you implement, and if the results are not coming, you control that. Now I have changed my definition from control to facilitate and support, because we are in a democracy. In controlling, we start controlling people also who resent. They don't feel that they are participating in the structure. So I say facilitate and support. So plan is required. May not be in the commission which was there because it went off the track. It worked with the lobbies who manipulated the plan process. Now why it has failed and where it has failed, I just touch only two features. Our forefathers, when we got freedom, they wanted, they brought a wonderful constitution of India where equality and justice was assured for every citizen and with dignity. After 64 and a half years, I want to ask the audience, have we really done it today? The question is no. Today we have two parts of India. One is called India, comfortable India. Other is Bharat, which is neglected India, and shattered. <coughs> shattered by circumstances today. <laughs> this Bharat is mostly in cities, and India is mostly in cities, and part of cities is Bharat, which is called slums of it. In the villages, it's only 5 to 7 percent, which is India, comfortable India, rest is Bharat. 
In 1947, our population was 36 crores. And 31 crores were poor. Whatever that yastics were mentioned at that time. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are 70 crore poor in that country. I am not accepting the wake up given by planning commission. 32 rupees a day, you are above the rate. I don't know how they can manage. I'll bring first part, what is the profile of this Bharat? It's 800 million people. They say, why we are not part of this competitive area? And they are feeling a sense of neglect by the nation, which promised equality and justice for all. After 64 and a half years of planning, <laughs> and after 67 years of independence. This India is going for karaoke. This India is going for criminal acts. This India is also revolting against the state. The 200 districts of this country are having black soldiers. Carry no illusions, friends. They are federal governors. They collect their own taxes. They challenge the might of the state. And say it is impunity. And they do whatever you feel like. They dispense justice in those areas also. And the population out of fear for those people is not coming forward. They are Indians. They are our fellow citizens. I have dealt with insurgency in my life. And I was asked a question way back in late early 80s. What's my perception of Mizo and Mizo, Mizo leader Landanga and Fizo? who had revolted against India. My reply was, which was not my original reply, but words of Dr. Ramon of Luria, they are dissatisfied and angry sons of Mother India. You remove the cause of their dissatisfaction, their anger will go. And I was asked to go ahead and talk about negotiations with Lagana. And it was such a change, a traitor became a patriot in a span of six years. This is one part of the story. We have to take care of every Indian in a planned basis. So that is so. There is no choice. Because people's patience is running out. The second part, this India, Bharat, what is the profile of this India? Small and marginal farmer and farm labor. <clears throat> Laborers mostly come in the cities or other states in search of their job. They migrate wherever the work is available. Small and marginal farmer is an entrepreneur, owner of the land, but shepherd. All petty traders, for a small margin of profit, they make the goods reach anywhere. They are also entrepreneurs, but shepherd. Third category, all artisans, services and people. They are also entrepreneurs, but shepherd. We unshackled the business industry in 1991, after we reached the lowest point of our economic history, when we had to mortgage our gold to get Bailing out for our foreign exchange. We open, we unshackle the country for the rich people, for the well of people, and they have brought a change in the country. Time has come that we have to unshackle them also. Because they are possible job creators of the future, not job seekers. And unfortunately, in the last 10 years, I found the government was talking creating jobs, creating jobs, not talking about these people. I know their land holdings are small. You cannot do anything about that. But certainly product productivity of that very land can be made into two and a half to three lines. I know water is short in this country for world going to be. But then why not shift to great irrigation system? I know there is no electricity everywhere. I could talk today at least when 18 crores was the per megawatt installation cost of 
solar power today has come down to six and a half to seven crores. It is viable. Why can't be given in a country which is plenty of sunshine? No European will recommend to us because they don't feel the shortage. No American one of 20 will recommend to us. It is our own solution we have to bring up. And also decentralized power, which doesn't need transmission anywhere. These are a few questions I have to I'm raising. The most important point which should be probably saying there is a town and country planning department in every state of India. Ladies and gentlemen, they all did town planning. Nobody did country planning at all. The result was because town planning was easy in a cushy area like Delhi or state capital or cities. You did it. Country planning was neglected, which means they were not taken care of by any plan. Mm -hmm. The net result was just for their survival, people from rural area came to cities. <coughs> for survival. <coughs> Delhi with a population of 3 lakhs in 1947 is today 1 crore 80 lakhs. With 40 lakh people, floating population coming every day in and out. Ring Road was supposed to be the boundary of Delhi to start with. In 1960, one plan it was converted into outer ring road. 1971 plan it was converted into outer outer ring road. I don't know where it is. If you go on Jaipur side, it has gone beyond Dharmada also. If you go on Karnal side, it is reaching almost there. If you go on Rotak side, it is already crossed that. If you go on Mathura side, now what has happened in the process? We have created slums. Either poor slums and even rich slums. When I came to Delhi in 1985, settled down here, I got a house in Greater Kailash 2. People told me, oh my god, it's a lovely posh locality. Ladies and gentlemen, I stay in a poor star slum with all the facilities. Because my house doesn't get any breeze from outside, I have to lock it out to ensure that the dust doesn't come in my house. Second, I don't get any sunshine during the day. What is natural here? What is the quality of life you are offering me after 65 years of planning this as well? I'm not agreeing you. So we need a change. Let's be very clear about it. That's the first part. We need a change. Second part, what kind of change also? It has to be kept in mind the legal system of the country which is called Constitution of India. And it has to be done by the people who are part of governance in the Constitution of India. <laughs> And there are two sets of the people who are governing this nation. A, civil servant. B, political leadership. Civil servants of this country are chosen after very, very careful screening. Today, I can say for the current year, 6 lakh people applied for all India civil services. And only less than 1,000 people were selected. And another 25 lakh who are qualified to appear in the exam did not have the guts to appear in that. Brilliant people joined civil services. I have no complaint on that. <clears throat> Through a fair system of selection, and they are the rulers who give the continuity the government's part. <coughs> if you badly train them or don't train them, that's a different answer. But they are the finest raw material. Now I'll come to the political leadership. If people want to grow, they have to raise their aspirations. Because I've been part of politics also, so I can talk about that. They have to raise their aspirations. Anybody. When you raise your aspirations, you have to perform also. If your aspirations are raised, you perform, you feel very satisfied and you are happy about it. It's an achievement. But you have raised the aspiration and your performance is lowered by any reason. The gap between the two is your frustration. That's why dissatisfaction builds an individual. When a group of people get together, it's a 
is satisfaction of a group, society, family, state, and country also. This that this satisfaction is the cause of 200 mysteries in the world. Left, right. Terrorism. We have to understand. Our political leaders are one who are put above this bureaucracy. That's why. If you look at the lowest level of our governance, a village, there is a village panchayat, the president and the members are elected members. Secretaries, a patwari or a karati, whatever the nomenclature, the lowest revenue official. <laughs> if you look at block, block promote members, block development officer is the secretary. If you look at, look at districts, Zilla Pramukh and members, Deputy Commissioner, Director or DM, the district head is the secretary. You look at the state, there is a council of ministers headed by chief ministers and the bureaucrats, chief secretary supported by secretaries of principal secretary, they are the one. And finally at the national level, it is the prime minister and council of ministers, we have cabinet secretary and all other secretaries are the one who is the Why they are kept because they go every five years and they have to understand the rising aspirations of the people. They promise to them, we will fulfill your promise, meet your aspirations. They understand all that and they have the risk, they have the accountability to the people. When they come back, when they are elected, they make policies and programs with the help of civil services to meet those aspirations. And they are executed. They are part of the executive at the top. And they have to foresee that. And the last part, sometimes the legal boundaries are inadequate to meet those aspirations. Then they can change the laws. They are the role of the legislatures. So whatever planning commission has to come, it has to respect this part. That information has to flow. Now I'll come to the most vital part. What did our forefathers see? And India got freedom. Preceding 47 years, from 1901 to 1947, our GDP growth rate was 1%. Our population growth was also 1%. Actual real growth was zero. We were standstill. What did we do then? Why did it happen? Because there were very large families. Our life expectancy was 29 years. Infant mortality rate was 400 plus. There used to be famines. There used to be epidemics. And vast majority of population would disappear. Our forefathers thought, we have to give five things to India. First was justice and dignity of every citizen. That's why we got a democracy, which is there. But can we have dignity and justice if anybody is hungry, hungry in the country? So long people are hungry, they'll be exploited. Anybody who's ignorant, so long there's no education, people are ignorant, they can be exploited. We can help. So long people are weak, strong people will exploit them. So first three requirements to give them justice and dignity are Food, education, and health. All three are important. On food front, we have not done that badly. I would certainly say that we have done quite well. But nutritious diet for every citizen is a question mark. Have we done well? It's still a challenge. This is a failure of the plans. Education. I am making a statement, don't mind it. It may sound very harsh. 1947, we had few lakhs in the uh, Graduates were close to a lakh. Post graduates, 30, 40 thousands. Doctors, 2,000. Today, we have matriculates crores. <coughs> Graduates also know. <coughs> Post 
which tens of lakhs on the high side. Doctors also close to tens of lakhs. Maybe more. I don't know the status. Ladies and gentlemen, India was more educated in 1947 as compared to today. We have degree holders. So no shiksha. That piece of paper is there. But all people say they are not employed. The degree piece of paper, the entry ticket is there. But you are not allowed to enter. Is this education? This is important when we are developing a human resource. One resource. Any plan has to be around this human resource only. Why is meant for him? That's the first thing we forgot. Then there are five natural resources which are owned by the state. Prithi, Jal, Vayu, Akash, Agni. Simple. Land is a resource. You are sitting here in Luton's Delhi. Here land is worth about 400 to 500 crore rupees an acre. Same Matti Pathar. But there are places in India that are places where land is less than 2 lakhs an acre. Why is so? Because people want it here. Nobody wants to move. The degree of underdevelopment is very clearly understood what is the value of land in Delhi. It's a same resource. I don't find any change, any difference. But that has to be there. All development took place around these areas because the land values were going up. Speculation was very high. Nobody wants to go there. So any plan has to go there. Third, why you? The whole world is crying about pollution. When I came from Mizoram in 2006, I couldn't breathe properly. I requested Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister give me a unit in Himachal so that I can survive. So I arrived six to seven months in a year, possibly. I spend it. I breathe fresh air. I get pure water. I get pure food and pure thought process of people around me also. So I am surviving that. But are we doing here? When we come to this world, the first act is we cry. Cry means we are announcing our arrival that yes, I come. People who have brought me here, please take care of me. And they do take care of us. I don't deny that. The second act to survive in this earth is we have to breathe fresh air. We cannot survive even for a few hours without air. And what do I get? When I came to this world, I breathe oxygen and gave you back CO2. Pollution. I drank water further to survive and I gave you urine and perspiration again for pollution. Then whatever I ate, consumed for my energy, again I polluted the place. So from day one I am polluted. Did somebody bring in the education when I am polluting? I have to take care of this pollution whenever I grow up. It's not part of the education structure. <laughs> Whereas our entire Grantha, our entire Vedic knowledge is talking about that. We didn't pay attention to it. That's the local part. So I am talking about air. You have to have green areas. We made the green jungles that we have. Then energy. Sunshine is one energy. Coal, thermal power, everything, all the energy. And food is energy for me also. By the way. So all kind of foods are required in a balanced diet. And all these energy resources are only talked about by a model which has to come from abroad. Sunshine is our nature's gift. Have we taken care of that? We are lost in that. That's energy part. Space also belongs to space because anything you want to do in the air, you need the space permission. And water. That's the 
We have used waters in Punjab, I, the state from which I come from. Merciless. Flood irrigation. Spoil the soil also now. And there are areas where there is no water. Subramanian, I am sorry. Did we do land and water management in the whole nation as a plan? Which is the top priority? I'm part of you only. <laughs> I'm putting the blaming finger on me, not on anybody else. These are the areas to be planned. I'll tell you a small story. 28th December, I had gone for a holiday to Gujarat, 2002. That time I was still in Nevada. So I stayed in the Rajon. My son joined me and my wife. And when the high the present Prime Minister came to meet me in the Raja. So it was a five day visit because I was going to Somnath and Dwarka and Porbandar and all these things. Like and during the discussion, he said, even you are staying in various places, for four, five night halls I had there. When you come back, give me the priorities because you're just about a year and a half old as a chief minister. Since I was part of BJP Jim Tank in good old days. And I was involved in the process of planning for development areas. Please tell me what should be priority. And on 3rd January 2002, we met. And he again came in. Wow. I only told him, and my wife, you have only three priorities number one, water, number two, water, number three, water. You are stuck. Yes, you are right. Because well, every year I found a kilometer, half a kilometer queue in a village, you know, people holding utensils and queue for the water. I said, if your people have to survive, you need water. If you have to have agriculture growth, you need water. If you want industry and services, you need water. And we discussed for two, three minutes. After that, I've never met him about this topic. Only thing discussed was there are 17,000 traditional ponds which were there in the good old days. That was the data I had known. And interlinking of rivers, you know, after the high the government has brought, which nobody was taking the money. I said, you can take up and recharge those oil plants and reclaim them. 31st March 2014, I get the data from another friend who was part of planning commission. Bob Hay Allahwala was second <coughs> water resources in the government of India and he was advisor planning commission. From those 17,000, not only brought back, he has created 6 lakh 9,000 small, medium, big water bodies in Gujarat. This is the only state where groundwater has come up. Sujalam Suplam, that river, new canal which he has made, has brought about 60,000 hectares of irrigation to that area and the water tables cause also. And I only requested, already sent him a letter, why can't it be repeated for the whole country? And I can you deliver, we can do it. And say with certainty. Because we have places where excess of water is there. Assam, every year they are floods, and every year they are droughts. And both are running businesses for making money by the people of the day. The last part I would certainly say. Housing for all, he has declared. Prime Minister, it is achievable. By self finance, you don't need it. But housing for who? In the last 15 years, ladies and gentlemen, we created houses only for rich and super rich, and very few for middle class. You need houses for economically weaker sections, PWS. You need houses for LIG. 40% demand, 30% demand, 20% MIG, 10% for high income and super rich. In the last 15 years, our real estate companies have gone for a massive house construction. 40% is low, 30% is low, 20% part of it. And the balance 10% complete, 90%. Today, you have houses around Delhi, you can see, and in every big city, you can see. There's a large inventory of houses lying unoccupied. It's 100% ready, 90% ready, 70%, 70% ready. 
They are owned as second or third or fourth house by people who had money. They are not going to live in those houses. And people who need the houses cannot afford to go there. What an imbalance. So 100 smart cities, yes, agree. But why not 1500 to 2000 small towns around 60 to 70 villages who bring in economic impetus and a plan and when you want to be root for everybody because it's a physical, emotional and financial security for having We need a change, I would say. The change has to be human-centric. Every citizen, we don't say democracy. Everybody aspires to grow in India. And I strongly believe if you put every Indian on growth path, mm -hmm. nation will grow automatically. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. You have given one more reason why we should respect you as we have on this day. Thank you so much. Uh, very quickly, before we go to the uh, next address by Dr. Rupa Chattopadhyay and concluding remarks, uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Prakash Chan, who will present a one two minutes report on. The exercise that we did on the search chain on the issue of the new author of planning commission. It's the responses that we have received and the papers and abstracts that we have received. Dr. Prakash. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, before proceeding further, I would like to take this opportunity to share the feedback we have received from different corners. India Policy Foundation and Forum of Federations had invited ideas, suggestions from research scholars, academicians, bureaucrats, and policy makers. And the result is very interesting. We have got a number of responses. We have received 23 research papers and more than 63 opinions and viewpoints in a prescribed questionnaire we had signed to the respondents. It shows the enthusiasm among the participants about this issue. I think every person is interested in sharing his ideas about the new entity because everybody is bothered about the basic amenities, roti, kapra, or makam. This shows the importance and significance of the theme of this seminar. So this is an important, significant event focusing on the future development of India. On the basis of the research papers we have received and the feedback we will collect from today's seminar, we are going to submit a report to the government of India. We hope that this report will, will be very, very fruitful to the government. <coughs> to lay out the structure and objectives of the new entity that is the new avatar of the planning commission. Finally, we are thankful <coughs> to all the scholars, academicians, policy makers for making contributions to such an important <coughs> thing of national importance. Thank you very much. May I now request to Dr. Rupak Chattopadhyay uh, to present his views and close the session. Shri Kohli, Shri Subhanya, Rahulji, Takeshji, uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to share uh, some of my views on this uh, topic. I should clarify, I mean, you're probably wondering what, uh, what a foreign organization is doing. Uh, on, a, on a debate that is essentially domestic. But I, I should clarify one thing. The Forum of Federations 
is not a prescript, we, we are not a prescriptive organization. We are an international organization concerned with issues around federalism. And why that is important in this context is because India is a federal country. And we have, and, and India is a member country of the Foreign Federation. So it is our obligation to share, to the extent possible, international experiences on how planning proceeds. Uh, Mr. Kohli, in his remarks, uh, very correctly said that planning commission or not planning is necessary. And India was certainly not uh, unique in having a planning commission or a planning ministry. There are many countries around the world who set up these sorts of bodies uh, in 1950. The fact of the matter is, in most what I would call modern economies have moved on and done away with such bodies for obvious reasons. However, uh, um, uh, a friend and uh, a friend and colleague, a former bureaucrat, very succinctly remarked to me recently that India has the most highly refined Victorian system of administration. So clearly, the the abolition of the planning commission provides an opportunity for reform much beyond just the planning process. The most important uh, points I want to make are, are threefold. First, that, uh, as again, uh, to re-emphasize what Mr. Kohli said, you still need to plan. Second, we are talking of the, 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 the topic of the seminar says, new are part of planning commission. So the question arises, do we, uh, and, and people talk about entities to replace the topic of the planning commission and the submissions and so on. The question is, do you really need the entity? Do you need a new entity that specifically does this? Or can these functions be subsumed by existing institutions? And the third thing to consider is the planning, uh, the planning, and I think Mr. Vermeer made this point, the planning is not just about finances. There is, there is a much broader uh, approach to this. Based on the submissions that one has seen, and on at least three pieces uh, three pieces of research I've seen in the course of the last few months. Uh, two, two of the authors of those pieces are present here with the audience today. Uh, and I, I should have promised them, it would be wrong if we not to promise them. Uh, one, Mr. Amitabh Pandey, who will speak on a panel later, and the other is uh, Mr. Ali Mehta, uh, have actually, in recent times, put some thought into what, uh, what a successor to the Commission might look like. And indeed, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that in the last week or so, we've actually had some uh, rather detailed discussions on Facebook uh, about uh, what, what this might look like. But, but the important point that I want to make is that going forward in any modernizing economy, it's important to focus more on outcomes rather than outputs. It doesn't matter in a year how many village wells you dig or how many hospitals you, uh, the hospital beds you create. If at the end of the day, nutrition, health, welfare targets are not met. So there has to be a more holistic approach to this. The second thing is that the, that the evolution of the planning commission provides an opportunity to change the mindset of the administration to look at multi-year, medium-range financial planning. And what this does, and I, I in, in my capacity as head of the Forum Federation, we work in 20 countries. And uh, Many countries have moved to multi-level, uh, multi-year planning because what it does is it avoids what, in some parts of the world, are called March madness, which means if you don't spend your budget by March, you lose the money, which means you, people end up spending money on spurious things, mm -hmm. uh, new office furniture, uh, new, you know, all, all kinds of things that really are not productive expenditure. So one has to revise the way uh, so one one does financial planning. And the third issue for which uh, the forum, uh, so the for, the forum uh, makes the forum particularly relevant is that India is not only a federal country, but in the course of the last 60 years, the states have become much more prominent as, uh, as deliverers of public services. They have much greater financial capacity than before. But there really is no institutionalized way in which to bring on board the views of the states or indeed other entities, local governments below the state. And so looking forward, any body that has a planning function, a strategic planning function, a perspective planning function, has to have some institutionalized way of taking into account the views of the state. Because there are a number of service delivery 
subjects of the healthcare education, which are in the jurisdiction of the state, and if you cannot get the cooperation of the states, if you cannot have a common vision with them and arrive at a common vision together, uh, you will never be able to achieve the outcomes that are planned. And so this is, in my view, uh, very important. And uh, um, a very important part of bringing states and other entities on board is, is that it, it has to be a process in which politicians are engaged. Because at the end of the day, uh, with, with due respect to my friends who are bureaucrats and former bureaucrats, it is the politicians who have to go back, stand up in parliament, answer questions, and go back to the people to make sure that whatever vision is being implemented is the one that people want. And without, without political engagement, and uh, this is my experience in other parts of the world, whether it's countries as, as poor as Ethiopia or, or, or advanced as Canada and Australia or Germany, it is the politicians at all levels who have to be engaged in the process of perspective planning because they're the ones who give their officials the mandate through which, uh, 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 through which planning uh, and, and delivery uh, is, is undertaken. In, in the course of the coming years, I hope that we will be, uh, the forum can be helpful and more engaged with various institutions in the country. Uh, and as I said, you know, we, we are not a prescriptive organization. Uh, planning processes, the administrative processes in each country are a function of its own unique social, political, economic circumstances. But what we can do is we can share with you experiences from other parts of the world both the good lessons, but also the bad lessons. Thank you very much for this option. Thank you, Dr. Chetopadhyay. Uh, I should be blamed for not managing the time properly. It's my mistake. I'm so sorry uh, that uh, we cannot have question answer session right now, but you in tea, of course, you can interact with the uh, speakers and the, uh, the speakers of the next session. But my professor used to say that, you know, you go ahead with the success, whatever mistakes you do, they belong to me. And one of my professors present here, Dr. Peter Chauvin, so blame, please blame him <laughs> for my mistake. Uh, the next session, uh, we are going to the break. Uh, thank you very much, everyone present to the dais, dignitaries. The next session is starting at 12 o'clock. The session will be chaired by Dr. Rupert Chakrapadhyay, and the panel members will be Professor Manoj Pandar Dev for the Institute of Economic Growth. Professor Ashwini Mahajan, co-convener, Sudeshi Jagan Manch, Sri Amitabh Pandey, Executive University Council, Professor Dali Arora, IIPA, and Sri Samir Saran, VP of the Research Foundation. Thank you very much. It's starting at 12 o'clock. Thank you.